Okay, hi there, and welcome to a macroeconomics video uh, looking at the component of aggregate demand uh, using data from the UK economy over the last few years. We'll also take a look at some of the factors that cause a shift in aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is best defined as total planned real spending on the goods and services produced within an economy in a given time period, normally a quarter or perhaps a year. And it's key to understanding the economic cycle that you understand the components of demand. So how do we calculate aggregate demand? This is one of the key macroeconomics formulae that you definitely need to know well. Here it is, aggregate demand or AD is household spending on goods and services, consumption, plus capital spending by businesses and uh, by governments and the change in the value of stocks, but essentially capital investment spending, plus government spending on public services such as education and health and social housing. So C plus I plus G plus the value of exports of goods and services and injection into the circular flow. C plus I plus G plus X, but minus take away the value of imports of goods and services. Those products come into the economy, but of course money to pay for them leaves the circular flow. Therefore, aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus brackets X minus M, and the X minus M is the net balance of trade in goods and services. So let's take a look at the data for the UK for the years 2016 through to 2018. The figures in the table are expressed in real terms at constant 2017 prices. What that means is that the data has been inflation adjusted using the consumer price index for 2017. So this is real economic data. And you can see there that you, know, you add together the sum together, the C plus I plus G plus X minus M, and you get a figure for GDP at market prices. And uh, we're now a two trillion pound economy. You'll see from the table, if I just strip away the, the, the heading underneath, that household spending on goods and services is easily the biggest single component of aggregate demand in the UK, as it is in many advanced high income countries. So household spending in 2017 was about 63, 64% of the total. Government spending on public services, mm -hmm. education, health, etc. That was 18%. We don't include uh, things like pensions and unemployment pay because this is just on public services. Mm -hmm. And capital investment spending, again, was 17%. Pretty low, actually, compared to some fast-growing emerging market economies. So consumption tends to dominate the components of aggregate demand for the UK. So what factors might bring about an increase or a decrease in aggregate demand? Well, let's take a look at some. What about fall in demand, which might prompt fears of recession? That might be caused, for example, by a, a contraction in the value of net exports. Perhaps imports exceed exports. We have a big trade deficit, possibly due to a recession in a trading partner. Aggregate demand might fall because of fiscal austerity when the government cuts the real level of spending on public services. It might also be caused by the central bank uh, raising interest rates, the Bank of England increasing policy interest rates, or perhaps a fall in the supply of credit from the financial system. And a fall in aggregate demand could also be caused by a drop, a, di a dip in household wealth, and also in overall consumer confidence or animal spirits. On the other hand, an increase in aggregate demand, well, that could be due to perhaps a fall in the value of the exchange rate, which makes a country's exports more price competitive overseas. Perhaps it's the result of a fiscal stimulus from cuts in the rate of direct and indirect tax, such as income tax and VAT. Possibly uh, an increase in AD could be the consequence of a, of a rise in the level of house prices rise in sort of property wealth and also perhaps share, share valuations. Or the financial system expands the supply of credit and money becomes more easily and cheaper to borrow, easily available, cheaper to borrow, and the rate of return on saving goes down. So what you need to be aware of is some of the factors that can cause increases or decreases in aggregate demand. Uh, keep in mind, please, that 
the UK is a highly open economy, so many of the influences on aggregate demand come from overseas economies, such as perhaps a change in the pace of global growth or uh, an unexpected fluctuation in exchange rates. So there are both domestic and external causes of changes in the components of aggregate demand.